every day there are construction noises and it's so hard to film it's been so hard to film here I live here for four months and every day there's construction going on hopefully it will be over soon oh my god in the meantime, please bear with me with the noise. I just, I, even at night, there's noise. So I can't really do much about it. All right, today's video, as the title suggests, I wanna to talk to you guys all about my PCOS and how I treated it naturally. I'm not saying cured because there is no way to so technically cure because if you misstep and if you start going back to old habits it can come back and it might sound short and abrupt but I'm just trying to not make this video go for 45 minutes um, any important information I'm gonna pop up here like if I miss something out which is very likely I've jotted down some dot points for myself but it is likely that I'll probably forget to say something if you're new to my channel hey my name is Rachel Lost I'm a coach and a nutritionist and I'm from Australia so if you want healthy recipes, minimalism videos, exercise routines that you can follow along with, and a bunch of health and fitness information, hit subscribe so you don't miss my future uploads. And to everyone who's not new here, hey guys, oh, welcome back. Firstly, I just wanted to share with you the symptoms that I had when my PCOS was at its worst. So I only found out I had PCOS early 2016. My symptoms had been kind of creeping up on me for a while. I wasn't sure what my body was doing. I had all these little things happening and I didn't know they were connected. My biggest symptom, which I had experienced all my life, was an irregular menstrual cycle. Now, if you guys are watching this video and you get like squeamish about those kind of words, you might not wanna watch it because I'm just gonna be very upfront because it's gonna save me time. So my menstrual cycle was completely irregular. I'd have a period maybe three to four times a year and that's ever since. So I got mine really, really late, which is apparently a symptom of it as well. I didn't start getting my period until I was like 16. And every time I had it from that age, it was irregular. It never had any kind of pattern to it. Like I'd get it and then I'd get it six weeks later and then I wouldn't get it for like four or five months. And I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't really care to be completely honest. That was the first thing that I noticed. Um, later on, things started to happen. My life got really, really busy and fatigue started to set in. And I thought that was because I was busy. And yes, that does tie into it, which I'll touch on later on in the video. Um, but fatigue became a really big part of it, as well as mood swings. On top of that, I started to get hormonal acne. Here to here had acne. And at first it would like flare up and then go away and then flare up and then go away. And then it just stayed. It'd be months and months on end of, yes, I had like good skincare in place. And then I, you know, I'd stop eating sugar and like I'd do all the things that people say to do, you know, cut out dairy, cut out meat, cut out this, cut out that. And like nothing was helping it. And then the final one I started to notice, which was like end of 2015, start of 2016, is I started, my body started slowly gaining fat for no reason. I was training well, I was eating well, I wasn't eating in a caloric surplus, but my body was gaining weight and it wouldn't lose the weight. So I had already lost a bunch of weight when I started exercising and training and everything. And my body just suddenly went, no, this doesn't work anymore. Another thing that slowly worked its way in as well was food sensitivities. I had had a gluten sensitivity for ages. And if you watch my original PCOS video, I was having some really, really bad side effects every time I did eat gluten. It was painful and I wasn't showing up as being celiac. Um, over time, eventually I started to develop a dairy sensitivity as well which was strange to me because you don't just become intolerant to something overnight that's not how bodies work so all of these things was telling me like something is not right and you need to get it checked out and no I didn't get diagnosed straight away I had to go to about 10 different doctors I finally ended up at a women's health specialist who I told her all my symptoms see a lot of the doctors dismissed it because I wasn't overweight and a very common symptom of PCOS is a lot of weight gain but I was training so hard and eating so well that my body didn't gain like an incredible amount of fat I just probably went up maybe two clothing sizes. And so by any GP standard, that's still in a healthy body range, but knowing my body and like the way it holds fat and the way it holds muscle, I knew it wasn't right. So I finally got to a women's health specialist who um, got me sent for a whole bunch of blood tests. So we, tend to, we tested my insulin sensitivity. My body was no longer responding to insulin correctly. And I know so many of you hate the way I say insulin, but that's how I'm gonna say it throughout this whole video. 
Um, on top of that, my steroid hormones weren't where they needed to be. So my testosterone was elevated and my estrogen E3 wasn't clearing. So yes, you can have high testosterone and you can have high estrogen. So most of my estrogen was fine in the normal range, but my E3 was slightly elevated, which meant my body wasn't clearing it from my system properly. Elevated testosterone is also a very, very common symptom of PCOS. I had an external ultrasound and then a very invasive internal ultrasound where there were growths happening on my ovaries. And of course the acne was a dead giveaway. And then we got my sister tested because she's younger than me. And we we're like, well, maybe mum, like you should get her checked out. And she has a two um, going off the symptoms. My mum said that it probably sounds like she had it when she was younger too. So there is that family history there. And if there is family history, you are more likely to have it. So my first step with treating your PCOS in a natural manner is write down what your symptoms are. Write down what everything is and how you think it might be connected. Bad gut health ties in so closely with PCOS. If we have the wrong bacteria in our stomach, it is going to cause some of those um, food sensitivities. And then on top of that, if we're not eating right for our bodies, like if you're eating heaps of sugar, if you're having soft drinks, um, if you're like down, downing those aside, bowls every single day that's probably not the best for women who do have PCOS and insulin sensitivity tied together so writing down all those symptoms because we need to look at what to test for and this also gives us markers to look at for improvements so a really obvious one for me was my skin and I documented that by taking photos in my phone that one was easy the insulin sensitivity I did have to keep going back and getting tests same as the steroid hormone levels the next step that I took was a diet manipulation now I started off with some small adjustments. I adjusted to a low carbohydrate diet, under 100 grams of carbohydrates, cutting out processed sugars, cutting out processed foods, so sticking to whole wheat or whole grain foods and sticking to complex and fibrous carbohydrates, so pumpkin, kale, squash, that sort of thing. I did that for nine months before I transitioned to a ketogenic diet. This is completely optional and I would recommend having a diet plan drawn up for you by either a nutritionist or dietitian. It might seem all well and good to play around with a keto diet on your own and yes at first you will see results but because it is such a restrictive diet and it does cut out so many food groups I definitely would recommend getting a professional's advice before jumping into it because you can end up deficient in a lot of things you can end up under in your fiber intake and you can develop some nutrient deficiencies I followed a ketogenic diet for 11 months but again that is optional but it just allowed me to reset that insulin resistance which you can also do through a low carbohydrate diet you don't have to go to the very extreme so keto I wanted to do that because my hormones were out of whack as well and I had been doing a lot of reading that it can help rebalance your hormones which it did and I do have an older video where I displayed my blood test results as well so I'll link the PCOS playlist in this description box so what are the basics to diet manipulation the first thing that we want to do is increase our dietary fats and that might sound counterintuitive and I know a lot of people are scared of eating fats but by eating fats you actually are going to be helping your body and I'm not talking trans fats like your McDonald's and your KFC I am talking about healthy fats so we're talking high quality olive oils avocados nuts some eggs things along those sort of lines and you might have heard that and gone eggs why eggs like aren't, don't they have saturated fats and yes but you do need some saturated fats in your diet you cannot cut saturated fats out completely because guess what your steroid hormones are made from cholesterol. There is a reason that we need most types of food. The problem comes in when we have things in excess. My next point is to scale back the processed carbohydrates and the sugars. Add in fibrous vegetables and brassica. What you may not know is that broccoli contains compounds which are great at removing excess hormones from your body. So what happens is sometimes your body can have too much estrogen or too much testosterone and no way to get rid of it. So it's really, really important to have that fiber in your diet. Even if you are on a low carb diet, making sure those carbohydrate sources are benefiting you, getting that fiber in. Now for supplementation. So obviously there's different supplements that do different things. I didn't take all 
all of these. I took some of them and then sometimes I swapped to other ones and this was all under the guidance of my naturopath as well. So make sure you're doing some research, you're talking to someone, you're figuring out what's gonna work best for you. Don't just take all of these and hope for the best because that's not how it works. <laughs> so I'll quickly go through some supplements and their benefit. Maca root powder. Now you can get this as a powder and I was drinking it as a powder but I've just recently started swapping it to uh, capsules. So much better because you can't taste it. Chaga tea, which is made from mushrooms. Rhodiola and Shisandra. I personally use this one as a mix and I also use withania. Vitamin D, this is a really big one. Um, I was taking a supplement for it and then I started spending way more time in the sun over summer and that helped a lot. It's a lot more cloudy most days so I am supplementing it again. Vitex. Now I personally had a really bad response to Vitex and my skin broke out really bad, but I've heard amazing things from people using Vitex. Myoinositol, this was something I was using pretty much every day when I was trying to repair my insulin resistance. Next point is I feel like exercise is an incredibly important thing to add into your routine. For your general health as well, if you have no idea where to start, check out my eight week transformation challenge program. It's an ebook fully programmed for eight weeks. It's got all your exercise demos and photos. Everything is planned out in there for you so you can just pick it up and go. At the moment, I am offering a free copy to people who do sign up for my channel sponsorship. So you get that, you get the private group access, you get live stream videos and extra uploads. Just mentioning that because I haven't mentioned it yet because it is brand new. If you already have an exercise routine in place, something that I would highly recommend doing, um, particularly if you have that insulin resistance, um, if you've got that little bit of weight gain from your PCOS, is adding in steady state cardio, but fasted in the morning. So wake up, have some water or some tea or whatever it is you want to have and go for a walk. Maximum of 40 minutes, minimum of 20. It doesn't need to go for ages and ages. We just want to get our bodies moving in the morning and starting to metabolize some fat. Next thing, which is more important than you realize, and it actually took me a, a long time to learn this, is reducing environmental stresses. So the stress that is that emotional stress. We can't, you know, there's bills to pay. We can't get rid of all of that kind of stuff, but we can reduce the unnecessary things, the things that we get stressed about that we don't need to be. So the way that we do this is putting other things in place. So for me, I love doing those faster cardio walks in the morning. I can do like deep breathing techniques. I can't meditate personally just because even guided meditation, I just sit there and laugh at the guided meditation audio. And that's not for me, but for some people that's amazing. So if that works for you, go and do that. And another thing that I find works really well for me is acupuncture because I'm shot there in a room and I can't move and it's dark and I have to just chill out. Another thing that helps with this is cutting all the caffeine or as much caffeine as possible from your diet. So, you know, I don't have coffees or anything anything like that. I do sometimes have teas, but it's more likely to be a herbal tea, like a chaga tea or something like that. Next, we want to reduce our endocrine disruptors. For me personally, this meant cutting out alcohol. It meant cutting out soy or any soy based foods and also other foods which are known to fluctuate your hormones. It meant swapping all my meal prep containers from plastic to glass. And I've bought a few of those metal water bottles, but I'm so bad. I still keep buying plastic water bottles which is the worst not only for like me but also for the environment but I just keep losing my metal water bottles but trying to swap to a glass or metal water bottle and of course there's different depths of this like you might make a few changes but someone else might make heaps and it's not a competition it's about what you can implement into your life like no I don't drink filtered water all the time because sometimes I'm at the gym and just use the water from the bubble do you know what I mean whereas some people would have the water bottles that have you know the little filter built already I'm not that organized I probably should be also check out what kind of deodorants and perfumes you're wearing I had to switch my deodorant and I'll, I'll wear the the good deodorant just so I don't stink but I don't wear perfume every day I know that might sound weird I used to wear it every day but now I'll only wear it if I'm like going out to an event or something because I don't want to cut it out completely like I do enjoy perfumes but I don't want to be wearing them every day and makeup a shift I've actually made lately is this is the first time I'm wearing makeup in about three weeks and I'm gonna film a whole bunch of different like video bits and pieces and intros 
so that you know for another three weeks I don't have to wear makeup again. I would love to not wear makeup on camera but you just look so washed out and I'm like I don't want to sit there and edit it with me looking like I just woke up from a 10 hour sleep. So it's up to you how far you want to take that but I would recommend taking some small steps like maybe you can be more organized than me and quit the plastic water bottles. Uh, it's super super easy to switch your meal prep containers from plastic to glass. Ikea have some for like four dollars a container. It might sound like a lot but they're gonna last forever. Mine have moved between three different houses with me. And the last thing that I want to say is be realistic about timelines. I started implementing these changes in 2016 in I think May. It is now May 2018. Well it's almost June, like about to be June 2018. So that's two years of consistency and consistency is going to be your biggest ally here. Eating a super restrictive diet for two months in the long run, is that going to help you? No. Over training and over killing it on the exercise in the long run, is that going to help you? No. It's about finding that balance that you can implement into your daily life and you can do consistently. Make small changes that you can keep up with. I keep talking with my hands so much. <laughs> Make sure you are referring back to that list of symptoms that you had. Check out what's still happening, check out what's changed and write it down somewhere. You want to see if the changes that you're making are working. There's no one magic supplement or one magic thing that can fix everything. If you want to treat it naturally, so I'm talking not just jumping on birth control pills. For me, that wasn't an option because I get severely depressed when I do use them. For some people, they're not great. For some people, they're amazing. Again, everybody is different. Um, and you know, if you want to jump on metformin, if that's the only thing that helps you, then you do that. But this is for people who want to treat it through diet, exercise, and a more holistic method. So not only do you need to consider your food and your training, but you also need to consider where is your mindset at, how How's the stress in the environment around you and what are the little things that could be contributing? So we're looking at those little endocrine disruptors in the environment as well if you want to get to that nth degree there. But I hope you found this video useful and I hope you're able to take something away from it. If you are going through PCOS and you are in like the throes of you know it being at its worst, let me tell you it can get better. It's just about applying that little bit of effort every day. Be consistent and consistent your long-term goals over your short-term gratification because now I, I don't have acne like every now and again I might get a pimple I don't have crazy mood swings anymore I don't really have the fatigue either but that's been repairing um, some adrenal maladaptation that I was going through as well and I do have a blog post all about adrenal maladaptation my cycle is regular like bang on the dot I know when there's ovulation I know when I'm about to get my period it's just like insanely regular and has been for about the last a little over a year now so for me that's really good and that's a sign that things are working and you know doctors have been like yeah it's working again like I had a doctor um, the other day and I went in to see her for something and she was like yeah so I guess you fixed your PCOS then. <laughs> cool to see my body functioning the way that it should be again because you know if you're not eating in a caloric surplus and you are training and you you know you're doing all the right things you shouldn't be gaining weight. It's, it's it's something's wrong if that's what's happening. And I know it can be frustrating to seek out a specialist whose values are aligned with yours, but you will eventually find someone. You just have to put in the hard yards and go looking. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day or night or whatever time it is where you are. And I would love it so much if you would give the video a thumbs up for me if you made it all the way through to the end. And if you are new, don't forget to hit subscribe. Uh, let me know do you like if you want me to cover more PCOS content. Like I had the PCOS series running for a while, but then when I was experiencing experiencing less and less symptoms I was vlogging about it less and less because I I just didn't know what to talk about because I wasn't really struggling with anything if you know what I mean so if there's specific videos or specific things that you want me to touch on by all means leave me a comment and let me know I can do blog posts about it or I can do videos about it whatever it is just leave me a comment but I'll catch you guys in my next upload bye